Welcome back. Uh, one thing with this channel over the last six years, it's kind of been a therapy kind of thing. So um, I did ask the Discord, I said, hey, so, you know, uh, let, let me know video ideas you think would work. And somebody mentioned uh, moments that made me rage. And I thought, hey, let's go through games that made me rage. So on the board, there's 18, although technically number one is two different games. Two different games to me qualify at number one for very, very different reasons. Um, now I'm wearing Boston because Boston's involved in at least half the games on this board. I do believe, uh, it's, it's eight. I think it's eight out of 18. So it's close, but it's nine out of 19. So it's roughly half. Uh, so it's at, so, you know, each team at, let's go ahead and go through this. We'll start off with number 18. And this is one that happened in the time this channel's existence, in the, t in the time of this channel's existence. So. Uh, St. Louis won a game 2-1 to one over Boston. Uh, that was game 5. That was the Stanley Cup final. And so why would I rage about that? I really don't like it when a team I cheer for loses at home in the Stanley Cup final. Um, I don't like it when I feel like they didn't play their best game, uh, where it comes down to a call that goes against them, and they just don't have enough to overcome that. And that's what happens with, with game 5. Uh, game five was, was tough. And then of course, Boston, uh, lost in game seven, but while game seven was disappointing, uh, game five to me was more disappointing than game seven. So it's one of those oddities because a lot of the games on this board are actually game sevens. Uh, at number 15, the New York Islanders at Washington and the New York Islanders, uh, won this one. So I'll put, uh, I'll put St. Louis here. Uh, this one was, although people who are, people who've watched the channel a long time will know uh, who would have won the game, but uh, in four overtimes, the New York Islanders beat the Washington Capitals. Now, this is a little different. Let me just write this in, game seven. I know this, this is going to be one of my longer videos, and I'm okay with that, but the Islanders and Capitals, that was, of course, the Easter epic. It goes to four overtimes. I wasn't mad at this result, but boy, was I disappointed. I was so sad for Bob Mason. Just that reaction when that puck went in, I was like, man, you could just see how dejected Mason was. Uh, and it's game seven, round one. So it's just the Islanders move on and the Capitals were out. And there are other Capital games I could have had on this board. I don't, because generally I found they were more along the disappointing line than actually rage-inducing. Uh, Boston finds a way to, to, to rage-induce, which brings us to number 16. As the air conditioner comes on to cool me off. Uh, but it's Edmonton and Boston. Obviously a 6-3 win for Edmonton. Uh, this was game three. Stanley Cup final. So, Boston's at home. It's game three. They desperately need it, and they don't get it. So, uh, Boston went down. I believe that made it three games to nothing. They win game four, but in the end they lose it in five. Uh, it was a series that the Oilers were clearly the better team, but I wanted it to be more competitive as a Bruins fan, and it just wasn't there. So, yeah, that was a moment where if I had had a channel, but there was no internet at the time. I'm that old. So, yeah, the Oilers over Boston. It's not the last time you're going to see the Oilers on this one. Um, at number 15, I'm using uh, the uh, Geno Ogic. Vancouver Canucks logo for this one, although this was way before his time. So I should put the year too, shouldn't I? 1988, 1987, 2019. See, it's burned up here. Uh, so the New York Islanders, Vancouver Canucks, uh, it was a 6-5 to five overtime win for the New York Islanders. Game one of the final, 1982. So as a Canucks fan, uh, seeing them go all the way to the Stanley Cup final, so much fun. Really enjoyed that run. But after game one, and just it's a turnover, it's in the back of your net. And so that's tough. Um, and you kind of could see that things weren't going to necessarily go Vancouver's way. Uh, it felt like that was the one. Like, if the Canucks had won that game on the road against New York Islanders, maybe that underdog story could have continued. Maybe they could have done more. But in the end, yeah, the Islanders were, they swept Vancouver and they made it look relatively easy. That first game was tough, but after that, it was pretty obvious the Islanders were going to win it. Uh, number 14, obviously. 
So Pittsburgh goes to Minnesota. They went eight nothing. Eight nothing for Pittsburgh. That was game six of the final in 1991. Now, I wasn't mad the Minnesota lost. I was mad at how they lost. So while everybody else was all happy over Mario Lemieux being given his first ever Stanley Cup, I was mad the Minnesota lost this one at home. They had a chance to force a Game 7 in Pittsburgh, and instead, absolutely one of the worst games I've ever seen a team play uh, in a situation where they're trying to force a Game 7. It just, it, it was not going to happen. Now, for Minnesota, they were kind of fortunate to be there. They were an underdog, absolutely, but still. Uh, that was, to me, an embarrassing result, and it, it really left a bitter taste in my mouth for a very long time. Uh, number 13 on the board, going with a Dallas game at 13, and New Jersey against Dallas as well. Uh, so for New Jersey, uh, this was a 2-1 to one win in double overtime. So New Jersey wins that one 2-1 to one in double overtime. Uh, it was a game 6. And it was a cup winner. So for me, going into overtime, it's game six. And again, I'm <laughs> same organization. I'm thinking, okay, if Dallas can force a game seven in New Jersey, they're the defending Stanley Cup champions. So I should put 2000 up here because that was the year 2000. If Dallas can force a game seven here, they have a chance. They have a chance to go into New Jersey and win this. Defending Stanley Cup champions, maybe they win back to back. And instead, New Jersey won in overtime. Um, I can't, I, I don't remember if I threw anything when they when they lost in overtime, but I'm thinking I probably did. Uh, it usually happens, it's usually nothing really solid, it's usually like a hat or something small, and because it, it, I don't want to actually want to break anything, but yeah, that was frustrating. This is a great video, isn't it? This is a video that should work for fans of the channel and people who just generally don't like me, so either way it works, right? Number 12, and Chicago fans are waiting for this, and they're like, which game is it, right? Exactly. So for me... I am going with, uh, from May 9th of 2009, uh, a 4-2 win for Chicago in Vancouver. What did I say? When a team's at home, I, I want them to win. So Chicago won that one 4-2. That was game five. And that was in round two. So it's the first time on the board round two showed up. Now, what drove me nuts about it was that Vancouver's at home. They need a win. They don't get it. They lose the series in six in Chicago. Uh, both in 2009 and 2010, there were moments that you felt like the Canucks might have a chance and it just didn't work. And before anybody says anything about Luongo, and we're going to come back to the Luongo versus Chicago thing, I never put it on Luongo. I absolutely did not. I refused to say, well, it's all Luongo's fault. And I will talk about it again when I get to the next game on the board that is the Chicago-Vancouver game where Vancouver loses at home because it's what happens uh number 11 is from this year yep uh so there was a bit of a, a bit of a time lapse between when florida beat boston and that recap went live so in this year's playoffs uh april 26th of 2023 uh florida beats boston four to three in overtime that's of course game five in round one so Omar comes out of the net, hands the puck off, and Kachuk goes, thanks, and puts it in the empty net. <clears throat> I threw my hat. So that's why I mentioned hats. I threw my hat at the TV. I might have swore. I might have said a bad word. And I wasn't happy. Uh, basically because I knew in that moment, and, and again, I know that sounds defeatist, but having watched as much Boston hockey as I have, I know when the choke is coming. It's a matter of when. <laughs> and I knew. I was like... And I said to my wife, anybody can verify with Yvonne, I said this, Boston's going to lose the series. They're done. And it was just, I, I couldn't get it out of my head. I was like, yep, Florida's going to win this series. That's the big moment. That's the turn of momentum. And, and it just, I was really angry. So I had to get that out of my system before doing the recap because I need to be emotionally neutral as much as possible for the recap videos. Uh, number 10, will surprise people. Montreal being on the board will not. We will see Montreal on this side of the board a lot. But against Toronto, yep, yep. Uh, so we're going back to uh, May 31st of 2021. 
Three to one win for Montreal. Game seven. Round one. So 2021 playoffs. Toronto's the number one seed in the Canadian division. And it feels like, all right, Toronto's up three games to one. They have to win this. And game seven, they just didn't play well. There's, there's no way to put it other than they did not play well. Montreal did a good job of shutting them down. I will not take anything away from Montreal. But watching that game was so frustrating to me. I'm not, I'm not a Leafs fan, but it was so frustrating to me watching that game. I was so angry by the end of it that, you know, I had to do a video strictly about how angry I was about that result. And, yeah, it was clear that Toronto is in their own heads, and I, I don't know how you fix that, but... Yeah, it ends up top 10. That absolutely is absolutely legit. To me, that was more frustrating than any of these down here because I really felt like, okay, Toronto's finally going to do it. They're finally going to get out of the first round, and then Montreal beat them. All right, we get to number nine. Number nine is more of a series thing, but game seven was a frustrating one for me. Uh, that was a 4-2 to two win for Minnesota in Vancouver. So in round one, in round one, the Vancouver Canucks were down three games to one against St. Louis. And Todd Bertuzzi went out there, and he did what Todd Bertuzzi does, uh, or did at the time, which was a lot of hitting. Uh, and, and this was before the infamous uh, Steve Moore incident, of course, this is the year before. And it was, it, it, was, it was frustrating to me as a fan because the Canucks were up three games to one against Minnesota, and then they did it to us. What made it really frustrating, too, was that the Canucks couldn't stay out of the penalty box. And they just, they, they unraveled. Once Game 5 happened, once they lost Game 5 at home against Minnesota, I had that, oh, no, feeling. Because it felt the same as in the first round when Vancouver won Game 5 against St. Louis. Like, oh, we got this. Yeah, we're down three games to two, but we got this. St. Louis is done. And then, yeah, Minnesota did it right back to Vancouver. And what was really frustrating that year, too, was that the 2003 playoffs, it felt like were wide open. Uh, there wasn't really a clear-cut number one team for those playoffs. And it felt like if Vancouver was going to win a Stanley Cup, that might have been the year. People will point out Kluche. I would point out other items with that team that was a problem other than just Dan Kluche. But don't worry. Past number eight, we get it. Or past number nine, we get into number eight. And it's another Vancouver game. So I'm using as many Vancouver logos as possible. Uh, so Calgary wins. It was a 4-3 to three win, wasn't it? Yep, 4-3 to three in overtime at home. Game 7, round 1, 1989. Yeah, I'm surprised that one's not higher myself. Uh, I've talked a lot about Joel Otto kicking the puck in, but in reality, that game didn't frustrate me. That moment might have, but that game didn't. I was very proud of the Canucks, the effort they showed. I was frustrated that they didn't move on to the next round. Uh, Calgary, of course, goes on and wins their only Stanley Cup that year. But it was so frustrating to me as a fan that... Because I knew that kids at school, after they lost, I won't be like, ah, they suck anyway, so who cares? We knew they were going to lose. And I felt like that just, that just proved them right, which didn't make me very happy as a hockey fan. But yeah, that was a frustrating one. But it's only eighth on the board because Montreal exists and has had... Uh, some some results against the Boston Bruins. Yep. So Montreal fans, pull pull yourself up a chair. May fourteenth of twenty fifteen, uh, Montreal goes into Boston, wins three to one. That's a game seven, right? That sure as heck is. So I talk a lot about how you know I, I get nervous when Montreal plays Boston, and the comments are usually why. Montreal isn't any good. Boston doesn't have a problem with Montreal. Yeah, there's some PTSD there. So we're into the first of the PTSD games, which is Montreal going into Boston and winning 3-1. to one. Um, I've mentioned I don't like seeing a team I cheer for lose at home. I also don't like it when they lose at home and they, they don't score. And in this case, just the one goal in Montreal had three. Really, really frustrating result for me. But thankfully, it's only number seven because Montreal has other wins over Boston. So we'll go into number six here, which is Montreal going into Boston. There's a theme here. Montreal goes into Boston and uh, two to nothing win for Montreal. 
And that was, let me double check. Yeah, it's a game seven. <laughs> and it's round one. So, you know what's more frustrating than seeing the team you cheer for lose three to one against Montreal at home in a game seven? Seeing them lose two to nothing against Montreal in a game one. Uh, so that one was from 2004. This is 2015. I also want to say for Flames fans that are going to ask, that may ask, where's the 2004 Game 7 between Vancouver and Calgary? I worked that night. I didn't see that game, and I wasn't surprised. Um, I I felt like they were they were just not, it wasn't going to happen. But yeah, that, that 2004, that, was, that left a bad taste in my mouth. So both of the teams I cheered for were out in Game 7 of the first round. Good times. Good times. Uh, Boston's definitely caused me some heartache over the years. And you can see how many of these are at home. Like, this is why when people say, well, Boston has home ice advantage. Do they, though? Do they really? Have they traditionally had home ice advantage in the playoffs? Are you sure? Because teams, they, they're, they're good at losing at home in the playoffs. Now, they do also know how to lose on the road in the playoffs. And what's fun is when it's in Mon Montreal. So, uh, in this case, it's 5 nothing for Montreal. Yep. So again, Montreal fans are going to be like, I love this list. I figured you would. Uh, game 7, round 1. And that was in uh, 2008. So there you go. 2004, 2008, 2015. Over an 11-year period. Three times I watched Boston go to Game 7 against Montreal and uh, put up a grand total of one goal. Now they also played Montreal other times in between. Uh, but yeah, uh, Boston and Montreal, when they meet in the playoffs, traditionally it's been a bad matchup for Boston. At least in this case, they lost on the road, but spectacularly. 5-0. Yeah, I wasn't happy for, for a bit after that game. That, 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 really, that really ticked me off. <laughs> it really did. And it, it's remarkable looking at how many times Boston's ticked me off in, in Game 7s and Stanley Cup Finals and... I still wear Boston gear, and I'm still like, yeah, I'm a Bruins fan. Why? And I, I don't, I don't know if I have an answer right now. Bergeron just retired, so maybe, maybe that does it. All right, number four, uh, and Edmonton's back on the board. Oilers fans are going to be disappointed they're not on the board more, but they really, generally, games with the Oilers haven't made me mad. But this one did. Uh, so it was four to three in overtime for Edmonton. This is a game seven as well, I do believe. Yeah, Game 7s are really good for rage-inducing. Round 1. So Dallas played Edmonton in the playoffs. It felt like every year for years. And so when I see people saying, I'm tired of seeing the same matchups. Let's go back to 1 versus 8. Ah, uh, you get the same matchups a lot in 1 versus 8 too. It, it happens quite often. Uh, whether it's Boston, Montreal. In this case, it was Edmonton and Dallas. You end up with the same teams. It's just, that's the way it works. Uh, but yeah, when, when the Oilers beat... Dallas in Dallas in game seven, four to three in overtime. I, I wasn't happy. This is a Dallas team that hadn't won that Stanley Cup yet. And it, it was starting to feel in 1997 like yeah, maybe it's maybe it's not going to happen. So uh, for Dallas, that's the second, second time they're on the board, although Minnesota, the North Stars, there once. So there's three times I've watched a North Stars or a Dallas game and been angry. Now, if you counted regular season, you might have a whole other list. But uh, yeah, in the playoffs in this case, uh, that one ends up at number four. Now, we'll come back to what I said I was going to come back to, because I promised, and uh, I, am, I am a man of my word. Uh, in this case, we are going to, I believe this is game, yeah, game four. Game four, round two. Uh, Van Vancouver at home against Chicago loses seven to four. Uh, <clears throat> there, there were games during that series in 2010. So this is 1997. This is tw this is actually yeah 2010 right yeah 2010. Uh, and th this series there were points again where it looked like Vancouver might be able to overcome Chicago and then they just get in their own way. Uh, that seven spot I I don't put that on Luongo. I don't put the numbers that that Chicago put up against Luongo. There was the eight goal game as well, which is not on the board. Uh, but I really felt like it was the fact that every time Vancouver had a shot, it was from space. And every time Chicago had a shot, it was from two inches in front of Luongo's nose. Like, it, that whole series, you look at it, and just by mere shots, it's close. 
when you look at the position of where those shots are taken from, most of the shots for Chicago were slot shots from in front of the net. Vancouver did a lousy job clearing the front of the net. And I felt bad for Lou because every time he allowed a goal, you'd see people going, what an overrated piece of crap he is. But what was he supposed to do? Like it, all these shots are teeing off from the middle of the ice. And meanwhile, every time Vancouver's getting shots, they're perimeter shots, they're from the point. Chicago's defending well. They're clearing the front of the net. Their defense is standing everybody up. And, and it just so, again, Vancouver was getting shots, but the quality of shots was very much in favor of the Chicago Blackhawks. They were a vastly superior team, and it showed on the scoreboard because Lou could only do so much, right? Uh, so, yeah, that one that one definitely that caused some, some rage. Absolutely. And now we get to number two. So, Oiler fans, don't worry, you're on the board again. Uh, and this one, everybody's going to know which one this is. Uh, this is not going to be a surprise to anybody. This was a triple overtime game. Yep, you know where this is going, don't you? Uh, Edmonton, that is game one of the final. I didn't write it down, but Peter Klima. Peter Klima had been riding the pine for hours. He hadn't played since, I think it was the third period since he'd been on the ice. Maybe the first overtime, but I think it was the third period. And so in triple overtime, John Muckler's like, ah, I'll, I'll throw, throw Klima out there. And I felt like it was unfair to have a guy who hadn't played in three hours against guys that were... I mean, Ray Bork might have lost 15 pounds and just sweat during that game. And Klima just goes around everybody and scores. It's a beautiful goal if if you... <laughs> but for me as a Bruins fan, I was like, that is not fair. You can't have a guy on the bench for that long and then throw him on the ice. And he's a goal scorer. Klima was a legit goal scorer. And uh, yeah, so I, I, was, I was pretty choked. And remember... Uh, in 88, I had watched as Boston wasn't able to get anything going against going against Edmonton. And then in 1990, it didn't happen either. Of course, there's the power outage game too, which, it, I mean, it happens, you know. And the power outage is like, ah, we'll just finish that game in Edmonton. Sure, why not? Sure, we'll do that. Uh, but at any rate, um, yeah, the, the Oilers beat Boston and there you go. So what's going to be number one? Well, there really could only be one number one on this board. But it's two different games. So, uh, let's see. They're both in Boston, too. So, Boston wins both games 5-2 to two and 8-1. to one. The 5-2 to two game is game 6. The 8-1 to one game was game 3. Of course, that's the final. That's 2011. So... Game three, I got I got angry because the Canucks were up two games to nothing and they played a really good defensive game. And then in Boston, they forgot. Um, they just they just forgot to play. Now, some of it might have been they just took it for granted. They're up two games to nothing. Maybe they floated a bit. Maybe Boston took took umbrage with it. We know these teams hated each other. Uh, the, the, the Boston Bruins really hated Vancouver and the feeling was mutual. Uh, then game four, Boston wins again. Vancouver wins in game five. Game six, if the Canucks were going to win the Stanley Cup, they had to win in Boston in game six. And I say that because um, if the home team wins the first six games in a series, I get very nervous about game seven. Game six was a 5-2 to two win for Boston. It was never in doubt in that game. And it was the most frustrated and angry I've ever been as a hockey fan. I actually turned the game off because I was so angry. I think it was after the first period I turned the game off. Um, I, I was, I was pretty, pretty mad during that series because again, even though I cheer for Boston, I desperately wanted Vancouver to win a Stanley Cup. Boston had Stanley Cups in the seventies and prior to that, Vancouver had never won a Stanley Cup and the Canucks had been the butt of jokes for many years. That'll surprise people, but it felt like that was their opportunity and they blew it. And I was mad that they didn't try putting Corey Schneider in the net for the game in Boston because clearly Luongo, it was in his head when he was in Boston. I felt like Vancouver didn't adjust, that Boston was playing better at home, and I felt like that sunk them. Because Boston only wins one game in Vancouver, but they only had to win one game in Vancouver because they didn't get, they didn't get beat at home. So for the Boston Bruins, that series was all theirs because in Boston... They were vastly superior to the Canucks, and then they only had to win one in Vancouver. So the overall score of the series is tremendously one-sided for Boston, because when Vancouver won, they had to get a shutout from Luongo, basically, 
and then they'd go to Boston and it just all fell apart. So that was my most rage inducing moment was I would say game six, but game three is there as well. That was really frustrating. Uh, that was a series that I had intended to record every game in the series and I was like, I can watch them back later. I watched the first game and I actually didn't keep it because it was kind of boring. The first first game in that series was actually kind of boring. The second game, uh, things got a little more interesting and a little more heated. But then it just all went off the rails after that and here we are. So, the Boston Bruins play a large role in me being angry. Both positive and, and negative, whether they're winning or they're losing. Uh, uh, winning here is where they've made me angry because I wanted Vancouver to win that Stanley Cup final. But outside of that, they've done a really good job of making me angry in their losses. So, all right, there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.